Thanks, Bobby. Hi, I'm Debbie Ingram, and I'm reporting live from the Phil Scott election campaign event. And I'll be talking to Republicans this evening. Uh, Phil Scott has done a, a robust campaign for himself, but he's also done an equally strong campaign for legislators. So we'll be taking a look at that. And he's also interested very much in the lieutenant governor's race. So I'll be talking with different people uh, from those races and we'll be reporting live uh, during the evening. So I'll send it back to the studio right now. I'm Debbie Ingram at Phil Scott's, but we'll take it away, Bobby. Okay, that's the short one, and yeah. This is a longer intro. Thanks, Bobby. I'm Debbie Ingram. I'm reporting live from the Phil Scott event, um, campaign events this evening. And Phil Scott has run a campaign for himself, but it seems that he's actually been more interested in the legislators. He's really interested in trying to get, as he says, common sense legislators elected so that he doesn't have the kind of supermajority of Democrats and progressives who are able to override his vetoes. So he's looking for moderate and centrist uh, Republicans and, and Democrats to run in both the, to win in both the Senate and the House. So this evening we'll be looking at the, the Senate has six openings uh, due to retirement or to death, sadly, and also one that seems like a viable uh, competition that might flip from Democrat to Republican. And that's, so that's seven out of 30. And then in the House, uh, there are 150 members, but there are 15 Democrats who have decided not to return. So that's a chance for uh, definitely the Republicans to make some big gains. And if that happens, uh, Phil Scott will be very pleased to not have to worry quite as much about his vetoes being overridden. The other uh, race that he's extremely interested in is that of Lieutenant Governor. Longtime Democrat Senator John Rogers uh, decided to become a Republican this year and is their nominee for Lieutenant Governor. He has a good chance against Democrat progressive incumbent David Zuckerman. So we'll be examining that race very closely as well. So uh, we'll come back to me several times during the evening and I'll have some interviews for you with those key players. And right now uh, I'm Debbie Ingram and I will flip it back to Bobby and the studio. Thanks, Bobby. Hi, I'm, this is Debbie Ingram again at uh, Phil Scott's campaign event. And I've got with me this evening, John Rogers, who is the re Republican candidate for Lieutenant Governor. John, uh, thanks so much for uh, for talking to me. Uh, tell me how you felt about the campaign and what you think your chances are. Yeah, it was a great campaign. It was interesting to get out and see some parts of Vermont even a lifelong Vermonter had not seen. So uh, met a lot of great people, a lot of positive feedback. We're really feeling great coming into this evening. Um, we know it's gonna be close, but we think we are gonna prevail. And I say we, because this does not happen alone. Um, this was a, a team effort. I had three folks uh, on my team helping me every day and a lot of volunteers. This was a really big effort. Great, and if you do uh, prevail, then what are you most looking forward to in working with uh, Governor Scott? Yeah, there's a few things. Uh, really, I hope that I can be a bridge in the state house. Um, as you know, I served as a Democrat for years, was a Democrat my whole life until just a few months ago and shifted parties. And so uh, I'd like to think I can help remove some of the partisanship. I really wanna bring uh, working Vermonters voices back into the state house because I feel like the legislators and the special interest work in a bubble and real Vermonters issues don't get on the table enough so that's that's what I'm really hoping to do it's all about affordability there's a lot of issues facing Vermonters but nothing else matters if we can't afford to live here great and um since the lieutenant governor position is the president of the Senate, and you and I both served together in yes. the Senate, which was great, um, what uh, what do you think about uh, the chances of the Senate um, losing some of its uh, Democratic supermajority and um, acquiring a few more Republican members? Yeah, and I, I think that they are likely to. Um, my hope is that we pick up enough seats so that they can at least sustain a governor's veto. 
Um, when I first started serving in 2000, early 2000s, um, we had a bunch of Democrats and Republicans that were moderate, and we could swing the vote. It was balanced enough so that those moderates in the middle could swing the vote either way, and I think we had better legislation because it was compromised legislation, um, and I think we're out of balance in the State House right now. All right, well, thanks so much for talking to me, and best of luck to you this evening. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Get back to you. Folks, can I have your attention, please? You mentioned the House earlier. We've picked up a few more House seats, including it looks like we'll defeat a committee chair up in St. Albans. Um, in the Senate, Pat Brennan is going to win in Grand Isle Chittenden. It's very good news. But I want to introduce you all to the next senator from Caledonia, Scott Beck. Um, I don't have any prepared remarks. That'll probably surprise nobody that's worked with me. Um, grateful to be here tonight with Governor Scott and, and all the other candidates. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic evening for Vermont Republicans. Uh, I am so excited to move over to the Senate uh, with a number of different, um, you know, my new brothers that are going to move over there, and so excited to hear what's happening in the House. Um, things are going to change, and I think the people have spoken loud and clear that the affordability crisis that has hit this state um, was to some degree, and in many places, directly attributable to decisions that were made the last two years in Montpelier. And that is what we are seeing tonight. And we need to c take that energy and enthusiasm and direction into Montpelier this year and get this ship turned around so that we can all stay here as Vermonters and we can all afford to live here and retire here and not have to worry about um, whether we can pay for basic needs. So. Uh, thank you so much. I um, look forward to hearing the governor here shortly and from some of my other uh, victors. I think there's a long list of people that Jason could, could bring up here. Um, but thank you so much, everyone. Um, thank you. It's a great night. Sorry to interrupt again, but it is now my pleasure to introduce you to the next senator from Orleans County, Sam Douglas. Not, not to re, uh, reinvent the, the wheel from what Scott Beck was just saying, the affordability, affordability issue was really the biggest problem in this election for most Vermonters. And that was definitely ringing true across the Northeast Kingdom, across Orleans County. Every, every door I knocked on, it was the number one issue. Um, Vermonters just cannot take it anymore. And, and that was certainly showing in the results that we're receiving across the state. Um, I definitely want to uh, thank my mother and my father for, for the values and the, uh, the ideals and principles that they instilled in me of selfless service and duty to your community and of hard work and always persevering and making sure that in all things just staying humble because that's the only way to live a, a, a true good life. So um, I would definitely want to thank them. I want to thank all the supporters that came out and helped me across the district. Uh, definitely give thanks to my, my rapid response team that I had, uh, Jen Blay, Michael Carrier and all, and all the rest. Um, I, I, we're certainly thrilled, thrilled with the results and I'm certainly happy to get to the table with Governor Scott and everybody down there in the legislature, regardless of their party, and making sure that we make some good stuff happen for, for Vermonters this, this coming two years. So, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce my son, Phil Scott, Governor of Vermont.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much, and thanks for being here tonight. I first want to thank my family, my wife, Diana, my mom, who came up from Florida, my daughters, Erica, Rachel, son-in-law, Joe, and of course, my grandson, Teddy, who you might have seen around there. It's Teddy right over there. <laughs> Teddy. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do this without the sport of family. It's like a team sport. Everything that we do is a team. I also want to thank my opponent for stepping up. I know it's not easy to put yourself out there, but it's clear Esther cares about the state we all love as well. And that goes for all the candidates. Campaigns and public service take a lot of time and dedication. It's not easy, so I appreciate everyone's willingness to get involved. As you know, this election was about one basic question. Can you, your aging parents, your grandparents, your kids, your grandkids, your neighbors, afford to live and thrive in Vermont if we don't make a course correction on the path set by legislative leaders over the last two years? It appears, based on some of the results we're seeing, is no, because Vermonters voted and sent a clear message. They voted for balance, and they voted for moderation. They told us they can't afford the direction we've been going, and they want lawmakers to set clear priorities, focus on the needs of all working families, small business owners, and communities, large and small. I'm sure it comes as no surprise to all of you that making Vermont more affordable will be our top priority. And I'm very pleased, very pleased to have more moderate, common sense legislators who will be willing to work with me on this goal. Over the last two years, I've heard from many, many Vermonters from all walks of life and all political parties who no, no longer feel they can afford to live here. They're struggling to get by and they're worried about their future. So to each and every one of you, I want you to know I hear you and I hope legislative leaders hear you too. Just as I have for the last eight years, I will use every tool I have to make sure the message from honor sent tonight is brought into the State House next year. Because we cannot continue to spend more than Vermonters can afford. To all of the candidates across the state who are successful tonight, congratulations, some of them here in this room. And it's okay to take a few days to celebrate because you've worked hard. But this isn't the time to spike the football because our challenges are too great and we need to get to work to address the cost of living, fix the structural problems in our education system, enhance public safety, focus on real housing solutions, not Band-Aids, and to focus more on the rural areas of Vermont that have been left behind. Tackling each of these challenges will take a lot of work. Creative ideas from all sides, the courage to make hard decisions, and compromise. So here's my commitment to you. I'll always be willing to come to the table, put party labels aside, and work with anyone to make Vermont a better, more affordable place to live. And here's my ask to lawmakers. 
I'm asking you to vote in the best interests of your communities, not your committee. And for the people you represent, not your party leadership. Because at the end of the day, we're all on Team Vermont. Believe me, I know it's not easy to cross party lines. I've been doing it my whole political life to the chagrin of some of my Republican friends. But at the end of the day, character and integrity are what we will be remembered for. Doing what you believe is right, even if there are political ramifications, is always the right thing to do. I also want to talk a bit about the state of politics across the country. We may not know the results of the presidential election for some time, but what I know is we need to come, come together as a country. We can't go on like this. I've always believed most Vermonters and most Americans are somewhere in the political middle. Sometimes our voices are just drowned out by the extremes of both parties. It's up to us to change that. And I think tonight's results in Vermont show we can once again set the example and put party labels aside to do what's best for our state and our nation. The fact is, our democracy can't thrive if both sides believe the other side is the enemy. Most Americans are good people who are just trying to do what they think is best for their families and their communities. We can't look at each other just through the lens of politics. We need to look at each other as people first. That's what I think most Americans want. That's how I'll continue to lead. And that's the example we should all set for our kids and our grandkids. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart for once again placing your trust in me. I think you know I'll always do the best I can and work very hard for each and every one of you. So thank you again. Thank you, Bobby and Selena. This is Debbie Ingram from uh, Governor Scott's election night celebration uh, because the Republicans have done very well uh, this evening. And I'm uh, talking now with Samuel Douglas, who is the going to be the new senator from Orleans County, taking over a seat from the Democrats. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Douglas, for speaking with us. Um, no problem. I know you were out on the campaign trail quite a lot. What were you hearing from Vermonters? You know, every door that I knocked on, and I just, I just said this in my speech up at the podium, every door I knocked on, it was the same thing across the board. There, there may have been some, some other smaller issues for Vermonters, but the main thing is what the governor has been saying over and over and over, and that's the affordability. That's the clean heat standard. It's the fact that Vermonters are selling their homes, they're buying camper vans, or they're moving out of the state. And it's not exaggeration. It's not a lie. It is true. And, in, you know, my, my opponent said that co consistently throughout as well, because that was a response she was getting door to door as well. So, you know, Vermonters are certainly concerned about that this year. Um, and I, I think that that has spoken volumes in my race and races across the state. So. 
And and so what um, what specific issues are you going to be then uh, mostly concentrating on as you start? Um, so I would say uh, pro business policy um, is is going to be my big focus. I see Vermont as uh, as a great as a, a state that could be really really great for business. And I, I personally know business owners that own manufacturing companies that want to move manufacturing plants to Vermont and specifically Orleans County. And I'm not talking about you know uh, polluting you know smog belching factories. You know, I'm just talking about normal manufacturing plants, and he wants to move it up here, but he doesn't feel comfortable doing that because Vermont doesn't have very good, very good business policy, not very pro-business. Um, so I think definitely pro-business is, is one of the things I'm going to be focusing on, uh, especially my first term. And in addition to that, one of um, one of my uh, the favorite bills that I've already been working on drafting is uh, uh, for firefighters. Um, I, I went around to several fire departments and I was very sad to hear that I was the only candidate that was coming to speak to them and that um, in all the time that they've been there, um, none of the firefighters could remember any legislator ever coming to speak to them except for Bobby Starr. <laughs> so, your predecessor so, in the My in predecessor, the role. yes, right. yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. uh, so I, uh, you know, that's one bill that's going to be um, uh, uh, a favorite of mine. I, I think throughout my tenure, um, and I'm really, really hoping to do some good for them because you know they're they're struggling in a lot of ways. We're seeing volunteerism across across the nation, you know, uh, falling is, is significantly. You know, um, people used to be a member of the Elks, of the Masons, of the Eagles. People don't do that anymore. A lot of people were, vol you know, a lot more vol volunteer firefighters. And we're not seeing that anymore, and our departments are, are, are reporting that to me. So, yeah. And um, we're, of course, watching very carefully the national scene, and, and yes, the governor uh, um, spoke about that in his remarks. How do you see uh, Vermont being affected by whatever happens at the at the presidential level? Well, you know, I, I've maintained that at the end of the day, um, the policies that we pass in Montpelier tend to have more of an impact on Vermonters, and, and I would say that that's certainly true. Um, we're, we're seeing the affordability problem here in Vermont in ways that we're not necessarily seeing in other states. Other states, of course, are struggling from the effects of inflation. They are struggling from the uh, from the, the cost of, of uh, fossil fuels and crude oil prices, but um, and, and certainly international trade pressures. But in Vermont, we're certainly struggling a lot more than in some other states, and it's definitely due to Montpelier. Um, so. Uh, you know, I think uh, uh, national politics and, and national policies certainly do play a huge role, but what happens in Montpelier plays a very large one as well. So, All right, great. Well, yes, thank you so much for, no for spending time uh, with me. And thanks. Uh, this is Debbie Ingram again from uh, Phil Scott's election evening uh, celebration. And I'll send it back now. We've just been speaking with Samuel Douglas, who's going to be the new senator from Orleans, uh, but we'll send it back to the studio and to Bobby and Selena. Hi, this is Debbie Ingram again from Phil Scott's election campaign uh, celebration, and I'm speaking with the chair of the Vermont Republican Party, Paul Dane. Paul, it's very nice to uh, to be talking with you, and it seems like it's going to be a really uh, celebratory night for the Republican Party in Vermont. Absolutely, and uh, and thank you guys for for being here, Debbie. Uh, yeah, it's it's certainly an exciting night. I think we heard from from Governor Phil Scott. Um, really, the reason for that success has been, uh, you know, Vermont Republicans have been running on the issue of property taxes this year, and uh, we saw voters uh, so far in in pretty significant numbers have indicated that we want to follow the governor. Uh, I think there's been an impasse in the last two years. The governor's popularity versus a Democrat supermajority. And there's sort of been this stalemate who has the mandate. And I think tonight voters informed everyone that it's the governor who has the mandate and that's the direction we want to go moving forward in the next legislative session. And um, can you break down for our viewers kind of uh, how many seats you think uh, will be gained in the Senate and the House? Yeah, it's it's still early. There's a number of towns that uh, still haven't gotten their, their numbers in. But so far, it looks like for sure we're going to pick up uh, at least four Senate seats. That gets us from 7 to 11, which means if Republicans stick together, they can sustain the governor's veto without any help from Democrats. So even if you go back three and four years ago, when Republicans were close, we always had to bring some Democrats in uh, to get those uh, uh, those those veto sustaining votes. Uh, that won't be the case this year. It's going to be the highest number of Republicans we've had in the Senate in quite a long time. And in the House, it looks like we're poised to pick up at least nine or ten seats. 
Um, again, a lot of races uh, still undecided. Uh, there's a couple incumbents that we still have to worry about, but we're going to be in that ballpark. And, and that puts us from you know 36 to starting to get to 46 or so. Again, very close to that 51 mark we need in the house. So it's, it's quite possible that by tomorrow morning we could find out that the governor is going to be able to sustain uh, his veto both in the Senate and in the House. Uh, and that will send a very clear message uh, to, to Democrats who will still be in leadership. They'll still have a majority in the House and the Senate, but that they need to listen to what Governor Phil Scott has been saying and be more cooperative and less combative. And um, as uh, Vermont is uh, part of the, the, the nation as a whole, and we're looking at, at what's happening mm -hmm. at, um, uh, across the country and at the, on the presidential ballot, uh, Governor Scott himself mentioned uh, that, that um, you know, he wants to see greater civility and that sort yeah. of thing. Um, how do you think Vermont will play into national politics? I, I think that we have the opportunity to demonstrate everything that Governor Scott has said and the way that we get out of this um, hyper-partisan approach is 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 to have that sort of small town connection that I think Vermont is is familiar with and make those connections one by one I think you know Governor Scott uh, has endorsed people that ran as independents and Democrats as well and so I think that will be uh, an important part moving forward and uh, and the key that I think every voter was reassured hearing from Governor Phil Scott was saying no matter who you are, that when you win your race tonight, your number one job is to come to Montpelier and represent the people who sent you there. And I think that's something that Democrat leadership lost sight of in this last uh, legislative session. They were really trying to get their people to kind of vote uh, in a block and, uh, and sort of ignore communications from their constituents. And if we can do that, if every single candidate a representative, whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, something else, make sure that their number one goal is listening to the people back home and trying to do what's right for them. Then I think we move past that partisanship and we get into a real uh, attitude and approach of public service That's a, that Phil Scott has modeled for the last you know, 10 years. Well, thank you so much for spending time talking with me, Paul. Um, well, my pleasure, Debbie. Great. So um, this is Debbie Ingram from Phil Scott.